<laughs> Suresh is going to talk to us about um, all the people, the signatories in the background of the manifesto. Yeah. The stakeholders, the list, this is like a whole chapter of people that are in the mix in this book to come together as a one big block <coughs> from all walks of life. Suresh, are you there, man? <coughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Suresh here. Hey, how you Joel, doing, love? Joel, Dan, that's good. Suresh, um, congratulations on this uh, 70 micron bag runner. It's, um, uh, it, uh, it, it made me not smoke weed all day because I was just too blazed off this first thing this morning. So really, it's quite a work of art. Yeah, um, try that yeah I've got yeah. pneumonia trying to make it. <laughs> yeah, look, I think it's like a, it's a huge learning process, plus the fact it's freezing around here. doesn't help. You know, the temperature and atmospherics and Joe Berg and stuff and... Um, I've never tried it myself. I'm a bit more of a BHO person. Mm. Yeah. So, Suresh, um, you've been working hard alongside Myrtle and everybody else that feels agreeing to um, to get the manifesto up. And you've been instrumental yeah, so in a couple of things with Cannabis Can Help SA. Can you give us an update on how it's been going this week? Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm handling a lot of the stakeholder management <coughs> for the campaign as well as uh, the manifesto document. Uh, so essentially, like you said, we're just getting a list of as many people that we think would be affected by the way <laughs> cannabis laws would be implemented. And I mean, just the quick rundown of the list, I mean, besides our fields of green affiliates, there's local community groups, there's other NGOs, there's obviously government departments, um, provincial premiers, trade unions, universities, media, private companies. Um, so, I mean, the list just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I think after <clears throat> June's campaign is over, which we make quite a lot of good traction with, we're going to start doing a lot more targeted kind of conversations with the right people. That sounds absolutely excellent. Um, in the time that I've been working on that document with Myrtle, it must have grown and grown by now. Do you know? Do you happen to know how many pages the manifesto is with all of this going on now? Because we used to have it as like over. a little B5 that was 20-something pages when it first came out. Do you know what it's, it's running to now? Yeah, definitely over 100. Uh, and I've also I've been quite busy with uh, creating an executive summary for the manifesto. So taking all those pages and like compressing it into like three pages is not, <laughs> it's not very easy. <laughs> but uh, I think it makes it a lot easier for people to access what we're trying to do. Yeah. Because not um, a lot of people have time to read 100 pages. If it's any consolation, lots of people have been trying to do that executive summary. And it's as tricky as fuck because it's an art form. It's like if you if you had to pay someone to do it that did it for a living, um, it would just it'd be worth the first run of printing just to pay them. So um, I'm sure you'll come. I'm sure you'll come up with something there. And you're enjoying yeah, doing we've it. Yeah, actually, we've done. We're on a final draft, and within the next two weeks, it'll be polished and waxed and ready to send out. So I mean, it's pretty much already done. Now this guy's on top form. He's amazing. Um, and how do you how do you get to know about it? How can people approach uh, the the fields of green for all unit to become a stakeholder in it? Because um, it can't be just any of yeah, so I think the yeah the first port of call would be going to the fields of green website. I mean, all the information's on there, or everyone who's involved in the campaigns on there as well. Uh, obviously, there's the social media outlets to get hold of us through, uh, and then also something that we've been targeting quite heavily is LinkedIn. Um, quite a lot of interesting conversations have been happening in LinkedIn around Fields of Green and the campaign, as well as the manifesto document. So if you want to reach me, easiest would be LinkedIn and everyone else on the social media or the website. Could you believe it, Buzz? All those years ago, LinkedIn no. would be the one that you'd yeah. climb into the corporation. I mean, for fuck's sake, we're trying to stay... <laughs> no, they wouldn't understand. Yeah, In fact, I'm not on it because I've thought all those years... What's the point? The director of social activism for a weed NPO? What the, who's going to come mm. to me? And now, no, you know that. now okay. it's like no, flavour no. of the week. People want to get yeah. in on it. Yeah. We always knew it would get white collar in a way. That, that was one of the things of normalisation is that... It would so have to be white collar and green collar. And <laughs> green collar. I like it. Lots of guys actually employing through LinkedIn. In the yeah. States. Oh, you use LinkedIn. If your LinkedIn isn't it's a big networking healthy, tool. then you, know, yeah. you won't get in. Do you ever see a documentary called Terms and Conditions uh, Apply? Mm. One hour of what happens when you click on that box of terms. At the bottom it says, you're fucked. We're going to take everything. You no longer have a private life. LinkedIn is the worst 
terms and conditions apply. You hand over your online fucking or your phone to them as they go check them out as a small print. They're, that's why I never went because you know I'm like paranoid about that story. That's what it is. I'm naturally paranoid. I know. <laughs> um, well done, Sir Rashford. What's your title in LinkedIn? Have you got like I've, my title's always been Director of Social a Activism, which sounds extremely grand. Have you got a grand one like mine? Uh, I just put cannabis policy activist. There you go. Um, I thought it was most appropriate. Yeah. No. Dead right. Um, yeah. And I believe. Um, you're coming back to the office tomorrow to pick up this. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> uh, is there anything left? It, uh, just we'll the empty we'll can. Give you, we'll give you a call if there's some left. All right. <laughs> cool. Enjoy it. Any, anything else to add, Suresh? What, what, um, what's the next stage in the campaign? What happens next week? Um, next week, so we're actually breaking up the manifesto into separate um, readable chunks, um, and that's going to be released through various blog posts. Um, and eventually, everything's going to culminate into Myrtle, who's sending an open letter to the president. Okay. Um, and then in between that will obviously be those conversations that I spoke about. Right. But I think after June, I think we would have set a good kind of a good basis to work from. Yeah, um, I'm just yeah. I'm just looking at the thread here, Suresh. Somebody here says Olbard says uh, the colder the weather, the better the bubble hash. Is that because the crystals break off easier and stuff? I think they get more brittle. It's also they get more like, brittle. Uh, people yeah. use <clears throat> ice when making bubble hash. We've put dry ice. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, the colder the weather, definitely. But I mean, you generally make your whole process has to be in like ice. Oh, like, yeah, okay. Ice. The, the, the process must be done in ice. Right. I mean. Yeah, yeah I found, have to do. I need to. I've never I found actually the seen yields it all my really years. I've, I've never seen it done. Wow. Sorry. I said I found I found the yields on the because I did two batches, fresh frozen, fresh frozen as well as um, dry trim, mm -hmm. and the yields on the fresh frozen are like minuscule. So yes. I kind <laughs> yeah. of get what. That's that's, it. It. that's that's what this is. This yeah. Jack is the cream. It's the very, very well, first flush, chop, chop, and then put another bucket <laughs> underneath it and drops. trap that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's it's um, we we're decadent like that. We can. I mean, that's why we grow weed. That's why it looks like we've got a lot of weed, but we haven't because we're fucking around doing this all the time. You know, it's like <laughs> it's, uh, there isn't loads of weed. Couldn't have enough weed because <laughs> mining diamonds. Because you could do exactly the same to the same plant, but turn it into shatter. And have it like the same size as this breadboard, yeah. a millimeter thick. Remember that was yeah. what we wanted three years ago. Yeah, yeah. That was shatter. the ultimate. Oh fuck! I've got to get an oven brew. <laughs> Mine shatter quite now, irritating because you can get yeah. the right size and <laughs> fucking yeah. goes with shatters all shatter's over the place. Yeah. Mm. Shatter's is great it? for joints. Yeah. Shatter's great for joints. That's all it is now. Never thought of that. Okay. Crash it up um, into a joint. Yeah. Suresh, we're going to talk amongst ourselves for a while here now. <laughs> we're getting more and more oh. blazed as the night goes on. Thank you so much for hanging out with Fields of Green for All. And thank you for the update. And well, guys, enjoy the evening. And I'll be the in the background. proof that actually loads and loads of people who have positions in society are now coming to the party. Yeah, we it's really not like, to have Suresh on our You know, the, the affiliates, the cannabis community that helps us along is one thing. But the... Um, <laughs> The people in the back of the book are a whole nother ball game of, um, you know, like there's government logos and shit now, MEC logos, and it's getting cool, it's getting close. Getting grown up. And yeah, and getting and grown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bit that's doing my head in, actually. <laughs> it's not play play anymore. <laughs> Putting out memes, a couple of blog posts, yeah, and like. Uh, the name's Bong, James Bong. You remember those days? Yeah. Like, funny those shit. Days. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> so that was a funny meme all those years ago, but now it's like policy and shit. Yeah. So that's so what people want to know. I think that's what's happened is, you know, uh, humor has always been fun and niche in that, but the one thing that remains with cannabis is that there's a great vacuum of knowledge as it now starts to emerge into this whole world of people who are enthusiastic financially, but perhaps don't know that much about cannabis mm. or how to incorporate it into business yeah. and make it successful. Yeah. Oh, God, what yeah, a nice. Just getting into businesses that they don't understand quite. Yeah. So guys, Dhaka Private Clubs, check it out on Fields of Green. Uh, Suresh is Lank involved there. Uh, cannabis can help SA. I see there's a lot going on there. The content's going out gang every day still. Um, <laughs>